So in this chapter algorithm and flowchart the topics which we are going to cover today will be structure of the computer program what is algorithm how to write the algorithm what is a flowchart and what are the rules to make a flowchart what are the symbols used in flowcharts some advantages disadvantages and examples so one by one let's get started about it. Now, before I start this, in the previous chapter, we had learned about what is a computer program. It's a set of instructions given to a computer to complete a task. But program is the final stage of the entire thing. First, we need to make an algorithm. From the algorithm, we create a flowchart and then the program. In this picture, you can see algorithm to flowchart and then program. So one by one, we will get to know about this. Okay. Now, algorithm is what? It's a step-by-step -step procedure to doing any task. Whatever task, whether it's uh, starting a computer, whether it's to make a tea, whether how you uh, get up and go to the school, everything, the step-by-step -step procedure, what we do, it's called algorithm. I'll show you with some examples. Now, here's some examples like uh, what is the algorithm to add two numbers? First, so the way to write an algorithm is stepwise. Do you see here? Step one, step two, step three. The first step will be the start step and the final step will be the stop step. In between how many steps, it doesn't matter. Okay. So step one will start, then step two will take two numbers normally, then step three we will add the numbers, and then step four will print the results. And after that, we don't have to do anything, and then we'll stop. So here in this section, you can see the first structure method for documenting process flow, the flow process chart was introduced by Frank Gilbert in 1921. And Herman Goldstein and John von Neumann developed a flowchart, originally a diagram to plan computer programs. So they were the first one. Now there is another uh, algorithm to see which one is greater in between two numbers. In the same way which I told you, when you write an algorithm, the first step should be the start step and the last step will be the stop step. But here you don't see a stop step. That's why I have mentioned this algorithm. Just get into it, go through it, you will understand. So first we will start. As you know, this particular algorithm is to compare two numbers and find out which one is greater. Now we'll take two numbers. So while comparing, in the step 3 we are comparing, comparing these two numbers if A greater than B. If A is greater, then what we will do, we will print A and we will stop. So see, in the first condition, if we take the first condition, that means A is greater. So if A greater than B, then go to step 4. Step 4 is print A is greater and step 5 is stop. So here we have the stop button. And after you have the stop button, we don't need to do anything. So if A becomes greater, we just print it and we will stop it. But if a is not bigger which one is bigger the next one that is b so then go to step for else else means if a is not bigger then we will go to step six which is step six print b is greater then again go to step five step five is what stop so then eventually we need to come to the stop section anyhow okay so that was algorithm what is a flowchart flowchart is a diagrammatic representation of the algorithm whatever we do in algorithm with some help of uh, uh, shapes we depict that entire algorithm in a flowchart and that's why it's called flowchart because it flows that di the direction of this flowchart is from top to bottom because it is called flowchart as it charts the flow of a program okay the entire program shown through a flow of charts okay with some examples, you will definitely get to know about it. So let's see what are the symbols we use in flowchart. First one, uh, in the algorithm, we had start and stop. Here also we have start and stop, but we use a different thing. That is the oval shape. For input output box, that one also, we use this particular parallelogram. Parallelogram, okay? So this particular thing, we use it, okay? Now for processing box, we use a rectangle. Uh, with some examples, you will get to know this better. For decision box, like if there is a condition arises, okay, what uh, particular shape we will use? We will use this rhombus uh, shape box, that is decision box. Flow of lines, as I told you earlier only, the flow of lines uh, from top to bottom, we use and we show it through this flow lines arrows. And the connector is what? Connector is basically to add or join the parts of a flowchart. If we have two sections of the flowchart, sometimes it happens if you are creating a long program, the flowchart might become very complex. So to add two or three flowchart at once, we use connectors. Okay. We have some rules. These are some rules. While drawing a proper flowchart, all necessary requirements should be listed out in logical order. It has to be in logical order. The how you are going to process your problem. 
Next, the flowchart should be clear, neat and easy. Of course, if it is clear and neat, it is very much easier to understand. Uh, it has to be less complex. The only one flow line should be used in conjunction with terminal symbol. With all the symbols, there should be one flow line. There should not be multiple flow lines. Okay. The direction of flow is a flow that should be from top to bottom. As I explained it earlier, avoid intersections of flow lines. The intersection means crisscross and all. You don't do that. Okay. In flow chart. If the flow chart becomes complex, it is better to use connector symbols to reduce the number of flow lines. As I told you, if you want to join the difficult parts or difficult section of a flow chart, you need to use connectors. Now we have some advantages and disadvantages. Flowcharts helps in analyzing the problem in a more effective way. It's really, if it is a uh, diagrammatic manner, we can understand the logic much, much better. Uh, if it is a uh, not a, a statement like algorithm, algorithm is a collection of statements, but flowchart is a collection of shapes with a flow line from top to bottom designed nicely. Flowchart is a better way to communicate with the logic of a system. The, we understand the logic better. Flowchart acts as a guide during the program developer phase. If the program developer having some problem, if they go through the flowchart, they will definitely come out with some good results and great ideas. A flowchart helps in finding out errors. Obviously, if we are designing something, if we see any fault, it is very easier to find out from flowchart. Some disadvantages, sometimes flowchart become complex if the program logic is quite long. As I told you earlier also, if you are working in a complex program, the flowchart will be long enough uh, so that it might take one pages, two pages, three pages. So it, in that time, it is very much difficult to go through all at once. If you want to change or edit something in the flowchart, you have to redraw it. Definitely. If something gets wrong in between, you need to draw it again, redraw it again. Okay. So let's see some examples. Here's an example with algorithm and flowchart as well. Converting an algorithm into flowchart for adding two numbers. We had the same thing in algorithm, how to add two numbers, start, take two numbers. So here, see, start has become with an oval because for start, we use the oval thing. But take two numbers for taking two numbers means we are taking from the user. We are inputting for input and output. We use this parallelogram. So input two numbers, they have named it variable name like N1 and N2. And they are adding two numbers. They again taking a third variable sum and they are adding the values of N1 and N2. Suppose N1 is having a value 10 and N2 is having a value 20. So 10 plus 20, that is 30, 30, the value which is assigned to the variable sum. And then after the sum is done, we need to print the result again for input and output. Print means output. For input and output, we use the parallelogram. We use print and the sum. And after everything is done, we use stop. And again, for stop, we are using this oval shape. So let's see another example. Converting an algorithm into a flowchart of finding out the area of a rectangle. If uh, you're in class 6 or 7 or 8, you know how to find out the area of a rectangle. Okay, so let's start again. So we'll start here. The same thing. Start, take two sides. We need to, yeah, for uh, finding out the area of a rectangle, we need two sides length and breadth so input uh, whether it's a b what you can provide any name in the previous example we used n1 and n2 in this example we are using a and b the variable name can be anything so here also area that is length and breadth so uh, if i take it length a length b breadth so length into breadth and i'm putting the values to area suppose a is having the value 5 and b is having the value 4 so 5 multiplied by 4 that is 20 a is having the value 20 Again, I am printing the area because while inputting and outputting, we use the parallelogram. We are used, we have used parallelogram and everything is done. We will stop that thing. So that's all for today. These are some questions from this chapter. Uh, please go through it, think and answer it in the comment section. Uh, if you don't know any answer, please ask me in the comment section. I will definitely write the answer. Thank you for watching. If you have liked this, hit the like button, share it among to your friends and write some good comments. If you are new to this channel, subscribe my channel and activate the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you get the notification of it. Thank you.